Receiving your Hogwarts acceptance letter is what every child in the wizarding world looks forward to. You get to follow in your parents and family members footsteps and you will learn all about the wonders of magic. However, one would be so used to magic growing up. It wouldn't be much of a surprise to see spells and charms performed by parents and older siblings on a daily basis. The excitement of Hogwarts would always be there, but those pure or half-bloods in attendance would see it more as learning to perfect their magical ability and skill than a huge magical environment full of wonders. Then we have Muggleborns, which, if we think of it, are people like you and me. We've all heard of magic. We've seen it recreated by magicians and special effects on the big screen, but it's always been nothing but fantasy. That is how all Muggles see magic up until their 11th birthday. Muggle-born children would see it that way too. Can you imagine their surprise at being told, it's all real? Well, in today's video, that's exactly what I'm going to talk about. How exactly is the news broken to Muggleborns that they are magical, that magic is real, that they're going to Hogwarts, the precautions their parents must take, prepping them for a whole new experience. Everyone, I'm going to talk about it all today. So with that being said, welcome back to the incredible, amazing world of Harry Potter and please enjoy today's video. Hey guys, just before this video begins, many of you know I very rarely accept sponsorships on my videos. In fact, in 4 years total on YouTube, I have said yes to only 3 sponsorship videos and that's because unless I truly believe the product can be beneficial to you all, I simply won't do it and I will always refuse. So if my channel and my videos are valued by you, then please do not skip the next few moments of what I'm about to say. With today's extremely high internet security risks, a VPN is the perfect way to protect your privacy while browsing online. There are numerous hackers constantly on the hunt trying to infiltrate online business accounts, social media accounts and even YouTube accounts, but that all changes with today's sponsor Surfshark. Guys, Surfshark are an incredibly powerful VPN network that offers you such an extremely high level of security and so much more. So what's the more part? Well, not only are you protected, but you also have access to blocked content not available to you in your country. And guys, do I have a surprise for you? 58% of my audience are US based and the rest is spread out across Europe. So for those of you who watch Netflix, let's be honest, who doesn't? You'll know there's no Harry Potter available to watch. That ends today with Surfshark, because if you connect to a VPN based in Australia, which you can do with Surfshark, you can watch the entire Harry Potter and Fantastic Beasts collection. And if that's not good enough for you, if you think, well, how much is this going to cost? Is it going to be expensive? Okay, maybe you'll give us a small discount. How about 83% off? How about 3 months free? And how about using Surfshark on an unlimited number of devices? And if that's not good enough guys, what about 30 day money back guarantee? So where is the risk? I'll tell you, there is no risk. Try it out, see if you like it. If you don't like it, you can get your money back. So guys, sign up using the link below, protect your internet privacy and enjoy some Harry Potter on Netflix. So please enjoy the video. Okay everyone, let's get started. So, I'm going to begin with a brief explanation of what a Muggleborn is and how they came to be given a place within the magical world. So, a Muggleborn is a distant descendant from a squib. Now, this squib married and mated with a Muggle. So, decades and even centuries back, squibs who were fully magical individuals but whose magical gene was not active, therefore not allowing them to use their power ended up preferring to leave the magical world behind and start a new life within the Mughal world. Over many years and many generations passing, the magical gene, which was just as prominent in squibs as it was in magically active individuals, resurfaced through these generations who had long forgotten their magical connection and heritage, becoming what's known as a Muggleborn, a magical child 
born from non-magical parents with the magical gene carried down from their ancestors. Now Hogwarts entitles any or all magically active children to an education, therefore these muggle-born children would be given a place at the school, much to the dismay of many pure-blood families. This had been occurring for centuries, so it was pretty common to see Muggleborns integrated into magical society. Now, as I've said in the video's introduction, it's a lot different for the magical-born children. The purebloods and the half-bloods prepping for Hogwarts is the norm. There was even some parents who allowed their children to practice early. For example, Draco Malfoy was already well able to use a broom before he even set foot in Hogwarts, as was Ginny Weasley, albeit without her parents' knowledge. Now, Hogwarts may have appeared as the norm, and don't get me wrong, they were still amazed by everything they encountered in the school, but it's a whole other level for Muggleborns. Once their names have been inscribed by the Quill of Acceptance, they are destined for an acceptance letter. Now, as you can imagine, it's a lot different for Muggleborns, as it's a much more sensitive matter. A Hogwarts or a Ministry representative must visit the house of the Muggleborn child in question and firstly sit down with the parents. Technically, they are breaking the international statute of wizarding secrecy by revealing magic to them, so it has to be explained thoroughly and will require a demonstration or two from the representative. As I'm sure you can all imagine, not many muggles would believe that magic is actually real. So, the official would also have to briefly explain how magic has truly existed for centuries and what an honour it is for the magical gene to resurface in their child. It would also be at the parents' discretion whether they want to send their child to Hogwarts, but I can't imagine many denying their child such a wonderful opportunity. As I've also mentioned in the introduction, it's exactly like you or me finding out right now in this moment that magic is 100% real and factual. That's what I'm enjoying so much about making this video because it is the most relatable and understandable situation to be in. We would all know exactly how that 11 year old feels. Can you imagine being told that you have magical powers? That everything you believe to be just fantasy and fiction is actually real? It would take a long time to sink in and several thorough examples and demonstrations would once again be required by the representative. After the representative leaves, the child in question would then be given a copy of the book A History of Magic in order to correctly brief themselves for the upcoming massive change. When it comes to making the trip to Diagon Alley, an official will be sent to accompany them as a guide around the magical high street. It would be a lot to take in, seeing goblins, elves, wizards and witches, brooms and wands, cauldrons and books, what an experience it would be. And as I said, definitely a lot to take in. The official would also have to explain the currency of galleons, sickles and knots, and help the family exchange English pounds at Gringotts Wizarding Bank. When it comes to the Hogwarts Express, once again a representative will be there to assist them, helping them transition through the magical wall onto platform 9 and 3 quarters. From there on however, it's down to the child themselves to quickly adjust to life in the wizarding school and the wizarding world. The best example of this whole process going smoothly is with Hermione Granger. For Hermione, it was her parents' proudest moment, and while initially being overwhelmed, she was even more determined than ever to become the best she could be, as she was already a studious and rather academically gifted witch. I think with Hermione, however, the situation appears to be rather straightforward. It is simple, as I said, by the book, how everything should go. But then there's what to do when it doesn't go smoothly. I did say, who would deny their children the chance to study magic? But believe it or not, there's been cases where parents would have refused, maybe religiously devout, didn't believe this kind of sorcery should be able to be manipulated or controlled. And if such a case did exist, Standard protocol would be for the wizarding representative, upon the parent's refusal, to erase all memory of the visitation. 
Thank you so much for watching, I truly truly appreciate your support. Everyone, notifications of uploads are more important than ever, so please if you haven't already, turn those notifications on to make sure you're notified the moment my video goes live. Making videos is what I love to do, it's my dream and my passion, however it does cost time and money to produce this content, so if you have a dollar to spare to support me on Patreon, in exchange for some exclusive unseen content, then you can click the Patreon link below or at the end of this video. Please only support me if you can afford it. And make sure to follow me on Instagram at instadnj and on Twitter at potterfolklore. Check out my other videos appearing on screen and please make sure, most importantly, to hit that subscribe button. Thanks again everyone and please have a great day.